Okay, so as promised, if you've watched any previous videos, over the last few weeks um, I've been doing these walks in the local countryside, taking photographs um, of some of the nice beautiful countryside not far from where I live. And I suppose the idea ultimately was to do another painting, so this is the point where I have chosen a photograph um, that I particularly like, that I thought would make a nice landscape in Long Melford. So hopefully on the screen now is the photograph that I'm going to use. And it's got, it's got that uh, lovely English countryside look with these sort of bubbly white clouds and a blue sky. Um, sheep in the foreground and uh, yeah a nice typical summer's day English village scene uh, in a beautiful historic village as well Long Melford which is beautiful so I've decided that that's what I'm I haven't done a painting for a long time but I have bought a whole new array of brushes that, that I've been that I've had for months and I'm determined to put them to some use so today is the day, or over the next couple of days anyway. So um, it'd be interesting to see what happens. So I've drawn out a preliminary idea of what I want. I might adjust that actually, just looking at it. I think I need the, the skyline to start about there. And then you've sort of got the village scene. Then you've got a, um, a nice sort of rolling field and then a grassy field in the foreground and a bit of a tree protruding from the left. And although in the original photograph there's only a couple of sheep, I'm going to make one of them a bit more prominent perhaps in the foreground somewhere, um, munching on the grass. That's the idea anyway. So um, let's see what happens. So as per usual, let's start with it's a lovely dark sky, so we're going to do this in nice graduated. So we'll start off here with a nice sort of dark blue. It always feels better when I've done the first brush stroke. You wouldn't believe how nervous I get about um, starting a new painting. So I'm going to keep it very simple to start with. And ease myself in. Not make it too difficult for myself. And there we go, that's it for today. Well, that's a good start. That's a third of the canvas covered. Okay, I'll carry on. Okay, so we're going to introduce a bit of white just to just to um because as the sky fades away into the distance, it gets lighter in colour. So I'm going to try and do a nice blend between the two. Now there'll be a fair amount of cloud in there as well, so... So we're just gradually lightening that blue sky as it comes down the canvas. Now, the walk I did in Long Melford, it was um, it was a lovely walk actually, a lovely day. Turned the start of the day was very wet and windy actually, it was really nasty. But the forecast was for it to improve, which it did, and it turned into a lovely day. And I'll put the link for that video down below so that you can have a have a wee look at it at your leisure. 
Okay, so we're just going to finish. I'm going to bring the skyline down to about here. I think the sketch, I've done it slightly lower, but I, I don't think I want that much sky in it. So it's virtually, when it gets down to this level, it's virtually, it's a very, very pale blue. And actually, there will be a lot of clouds in the background. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to blend these colours a little bit better. So I might get a dry brush and just see if I can blend that a little bit better into the background. So let's just do the even put a little bit of just a little dab of water on that there we go really blend that in bits of the canvas coming through Keep it very um, light and fluffy. I will darken these down. They look a bit prominent at the moment, but I will. They're very typical sort of um, wispy, summery clouds. So I want to give them some sort of I don't want to make them too prominent, but I want them to. I want them to feature. I want it to be a feature of clouds because they are. I always think they're what's special about um, this. You know, the summer and the way I'm doing this. I've sort of got my eyes half closed so that I'm sort of squinting and looking at them out of focus, so I can sort of get a. I'm just following, I'm not following any particular, I'm not following necessarily the photograph precisely, but I'm sort of just going to dab them on and see how, see how we get on. Right, I think I'll call that for now for the sky. I'm not going to dabble anymore on that because I'm going to overwork it. I'm going to work on the foreground now. So we've got a sort of a nice summer meadow in there with dappled sunlight. And then here we've got more a, a sort of grazing field with sort of wild grasses and so on on it and animals grazing on it. So I'm going to do the background in there first and then see what happens then. And that's sort of the a wee bit more. And then we're going to get a much darker, I'm going to use this as a base colour, this might look scary to start with, but it's, this is really just a base colour I want to put in here, which is quite dark, and this is sort of more the foreground, this is where the, there's sort of an undulating hill in between. As I say with every painting, there's that uncomfortable stage where the painting just looks messy. It just looks like a, like a complete mess. And that's when I get most nervous because I think, oh God, what's, it, what's this going to turn into? 
So we've got trees, just do a ver sort of variety of trees in here. So there'll be trees in the background, the foreground. Okay, let's leave that for a minute. Just to give you a bit of an update, um, sometimes I've, I start painting and I forget, I forget all about the camera. So I've started filling in the mid ground here. Now there's going to be, it's mainly going to be predominantly trees, but you will get the church poking through there and some of these little houses tucked away in, in amongst the trees. So I've just started putting in rooftops and, and things and I'll add more detail later. I think I'll wait for this just to dry a little bit more and then just add a bit more detail and then start uh, building up the layers of trees. So I'm quite pleased with it so far, I think. So let's get the, the broader leaves on. I'm just getting the background colours of trees on here. It looks a wee bit messy at the moment, but the houses are very much nestled in amongst the trees. We'll bring them out a bit in, uh, when I put the highlights in. It'll, it'll stand out a bit better. It'll look, it'll look a lot better. So I'm just putting on a very, very loose layer of what will be grasses and so on in the foreground. So I'm just dabbling on different textures as a sort of first layer. It's like anything with um, painting, it's all about adding your layers and layers and layers and then eventually it, hopefully, it'll all come together. So I'm just putting on sort of suggestions of grass on there. I've just got mixtures of yellows and greens because on the original photograph it's quite an array of colours really coming through. Right, well I'm going to call that a take for day one. I think I'll leave that to dry. That's a primary layer on. I'm pretty pleased with that so far. There's a lot of tidying up to do. So I'm pretty pleased with that for for the first day. So that's what, about two or three hours I've been doing it, uh, working at it now. So I'm going to leave that for now. That's, that's okay for a primary um, an initial start. I've got the foreground, got paint all over the canvas. And now it's a matter of sort of tidying it up and putting highlights in and adding detail. Um, and I'm even going to attempt to draw or paint sheep in here because in this, uh, this is actually the grounds of Melford Hall and they have a very specific type of sheep. It's a Syrian, it's quite a rare breed of sheep. So I'm going to attempt to paint one into the foreground, just add a bit of foreground interest. Put the tree here, dapple a few other little um, sheepsy around just to get a sense of perspective, sort of highlights in the mid ground and then see where that takes us tomorrow. So that's it for today. Right, I'm going to start working on this mid ground at the moment because it looks a bit messy at the moment and I want to get a nice a nice mix in there I'm going to put a very flat color in there to start with
Right, I'm just going to try. I'm really experimenting with colour now more than anything. I want to get a nice bright colour mix on the go here for the for the grasses. So I'm not quite sure what's going to work here. So I'm just experimenting. Let's see, I think it needs to be a bit wetter than that to be honest. And it's a mixture of the sun shining on it and the type of vegetation it is. Right, um, okay, progress report. Um, I've done a bit more work in the mid ground and background. It's the foreground I'm really struggling with. I am really struggling with it. I don't know how to do this. Anyway, I've drawn on my, my sheep as a, as a start. It's really a start because um, I'm gonna partly obscure it with grass and stuff. It'll be much more, it'll be less obvious than it is at the moment. Uh, I've darkened this because I realized there was very little contrast in here. It looked very flat. So I'm gonna put dark in there. I've darkened that. I'm gonna let it dry and then start putting the, the grasses on. I'm working on that and hopefully get it uh, completed today. So um, that's the story so far. Right, I'm just going to add a few finishing touches now. I've put in the sheep in here. So I'm going to finish off the grass. I think we're nearly there actually. I'm trying to get this grass right. I find out the grass. Because it is, as is suggested, it's just a mixture of different sorts of grass. I don't think there's anything predominant there. It's just pasture sort of wild pasture. Right, well I'm going to call it a day at that. I've been working at it now for um, a couple of days and I'm, I'm pleased with the result. I'm not saying that it's finished yet because I'll probably leave it for a day or two and come back and have a look at it and, um, you know, change a few things here and there. To give you uh, an update, I've sort of been, I haven't been very happy with the, the foreground of the painting. So what I've done is I've put another coat of paint on and I thought this is probably a better way of demonstrating, but I've put the paint on quite thick, a few layers. So what I'm doing with the palette knife is simply scraping on the suggestion of grass and it's sort of cutting through the various layers of paint. I hope that, I hope that can, I uh, hope that shows up okay on the screen. So I'm literally just scoring the paint and obviously the paint, the, the certainly the top layer of paint is still wet. And it's just scraping through the various layers of paint. And producing this sort of grass effect. And I quite like that. So I thought I would quickly demonstrate it. And probably this is the best way of doing it with this handheld camera. So this is going to be my... 
final part of the painting. I was just dissatisfied with the foreground. It didn't quite, it looked a bit flat to me. Um, and I thought this, this technique might add a bit of something to it. So hopefully, I won't know what, that's, what this is coming out on camera. I hope it's focused. Uh, in the description I'll put the link by the way to my Instagram page because I tend to go out and and, and take photographs and stuff and I, I tend to use those as, as inspiration if I'm doing any paintings but I, t I tend to put all the, the good photographs on Instagram so if you want to check those out I'll put them in my I'll put the link below okay so thanks for watching and join me again some other time okay goodbye oh hang on I don't think I should make a big deal of it. <laughs>